Uh, hi, welcome to Watch Jelly. My name is Elvin. So we're Joshua again for another episode of the pod on the video channel. Talk about uh, a, mus- a, a musician standpoint in terms of you know career, uh, uh, pursuing it as a hobby. Uh, you know, I think these are the topics that you know we grapple with in a in a, in a city that is expensive to live in. Yeah. Uh, and then for people who think that Singapore maybe is a bit lacking in the arts scene, in the music scene. I think we can debunk some myths about that maybe yep. today, even if you want to. So sure. today uh, we'll be talking about some maybe even watches to wear while you're performing. Maybe <laughs> uh, some of our favorite performers wearing certain watches when performing on stage. Yep. Uh, and then what are some of the random, most random things that you've heard? Like people tell you you must wear some kind of watch to perform. Like, you know, <laughs> yep. In my opinion, yeah, whatever. So okay, <laughs> so, so so let's start the yep. let's start the the, the topic today. Um, so so Jordan, you're you're a musician as we all know. Uh, uh, you want to give us a brief, like, you know, when you started playing music. So I, just to give you an example, I started playing music at three. I went to piano classes at three uh, every weekend at the, at the, at the, Yama, at the Yamaha uh, 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 tuition center of sorts wow. back in the day. Uh, I never made it past grade four in the Royal Music Academy, the Royal Music thing based in the UK. Reason why? Uh, classical music wasn't my thing. Uh, I listened to a lot of pop music at the time, a bit of metal here and there. Um, just not my thing. Yeah. So, and then I had to learn, and one silly excuse I, li- I like to give is that Mozart started listening, playing piano at two, I started at three. Yeah. But how did we have so different trajectories in life? It's because <laughs> Mozart did not have to learn Mandarin as a second language. So I'm blaming <laughs> learning Mandarin as a second language. I mean, no offense. I mean, my Mandarin is pretty good. So yeah. it's, it's not that I, I gave up a lot and I, 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 I managed to get some tricks when I, when I spoke Mandarin, uh, when I speak Mandarin from time to time. So I'm, I'm not going to blame that. So it's fine. It's a good, it's a good actually. <laughs> so maybe you want to tell us about your situation. Again, let's just say it a bit tongue in cheek. So don't take me too seriously, guys. Okay. So tell us, Joshua. What's up? No, but uh, the experience you kind of described was quite stereotypical of a lot of parents, right? Like yeah. Young, send the kids to tuition. Yeah. And apart from the usual subjects that you test in school, okay, we need to make sure the child is well-rounded. So let's send them for what? Piano class. Piano classes, brightly right. available. So yeah, send them to piano class. So I was sent to piano class as well. Shit. I just didn't have the patience for it. Okay. I hated it. Okay. <laughs> they tried to send me for violin classes as well. Fuck. So I tried to fight it for a while. It was I just didn't like the position. It was really itchy, and you know? I was like, "No, no way! I'm not doing this." Okay. And so it's the kind of thing whereby I feel like music, it, or rather anything in general, even for endeavors, right? You can only continue it if you have conviction in it, and if you take a liking to it. Genuine it, liking, right? Exactly, and it has to be innate, right? Right. So, uh, that was actually when I was really young. When I first started, was when I picked up the guitar lying around the house when I was five-ish, six. Okay. Yeah. So my parents both know how to play the guitar. Shit. So essentially, back then, I think the guitar might have been bigger than me or whatever, right? So I picked up the guitar and I was like, Mom, Dad, could you teach me some chords? So I started playing then. Not seriously, but I started playing then. For five, six, seven years old. Five, six, seven, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I only got really serious at it in secondary school. Because of John Mayer, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> among other people. Among others as well, right, right. right? Yeah, essentially, it was uh, it was a good hobby to have, I thought. And right. It, again, it's innate, right? Like, you feel like, okay, I want to do something with my life. Yeah. <laughs> I want to learn something. But you practically carried on then. So, exactly. so more fervently, secondary school. Exactly. Uh, secondary school, to JC, to army as well. Right. So, all literally the, from, yeah. you what, 13, 14, all the way to now, you are sort of... Touching the big three, yeah? Uh, yeah, the big, the big three. Touching only touching. Oh, 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 crossing the big crossing. three. Crossing the big three. Yep. You said it. I didn't say it. Yeah, it's I, okay, I it's fine. Yeah. So yeah. then, then okay. So we started, I guess, acoustic folk guitar. Yep. The typical standard ones. Yep. Um, then I, I know you do play. If, if you don't know Joshua, you, I'll, I'll try to share a link to his Instagram. You see his ridiculous stuff that he plays. Those of you who know him, you know. <laughs> so I know you play, you still play acoustic guitar, uh, yeah. you, but you, you do have a pretty sick setup at home. So when did you cross that, um, cross that 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 that, that bridge that, that, that of, of no return, right? <laughs> where, where you start getting into electric guitars, buying yep. expensive stuff. Just tell us about that. So essentially, you know, when you first start, right? Being yeah. a student and everything, you, right. don't, you don't have a lot of money, right? You can't really buy your own stuff mostly. Sure. So a lot of it will have to be either you work for it. So I gave uh, guitar lessons at one point in time. Okay. For allowance and also to say I want to buy gear, right? And music gear, unfortunately, okay, now the prices have come down, it's a lot more accessible, but still it's a relatively high bar to entry for students. Yeah. Right. So you do have to find some way to get the money, right? Right. In that sense. So... 
I it's in that sense my collection has something it has been something that I slowly accumulated over the years. Yep. Now with a full time job, I can say the accumulation has been a bit faster. <laughs> if I can put it that way. Yeah. In the past, it would have been years to save up for just one guitar, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's a little bit easier. And okay. hence, uh, it's exponentially grown. <laughs> so, telling me about your set, yeah. So, so his setup, I, I see videos of your set, like you, you, you post that whole, probably it's only a subset of your full thing. So, I, yeah. I see, I see uh, amplifiers, I see, again, my reasonable knowledge, I see pedal boards, I see pedals. Obviously, I'm sure you have some production thing going on with, with, uh, with your amps and your speakers, proper speakers. Yeah. So, how many guitars do you have right now? Let me just ask it point blank. Oh. Uh, electric guitars, huh? So I kind of lost track. I think maybe <laughs> nine or ten. Nine or nine or ten. Nine or ten, maybe. Yeah. So, so what brands do you? If you just could give us a snapshot of what brands you. <laughs> okay, let me name some brands. Just say, just not your head. Yes yep. or no? Gibson. Yep. Uh. Fender. Fender. Yep. Shit. Uh. Yep. Shit. That's all the brands I know. KRS. PRS or yes. the Silver Sky, the drum No, I don't have the Silver Sky, but I have uh, the PRS. PRS, the one with the drum yeah. Uh, What else? What else are there? Gretsch. Uh, Gretsch! Yeah, 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 Gretsch. Gretsch. Jack White plays Gretsch. Uh, yep. Yeah, exactly. I just cannot remember. Gretsch. What else? What else? Yes. Uh, Sir. Sir is a new okay. sort of company. Okay. I have a Sir, then Electro. Yeah, pretty much about it. But every brand, every major brand has their own flagship, like call it three or four models, right? Right. So it's, Collecting them all few. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. Then, okay, so maybe two part question. Which was yeah. your most recent purchase? Sure. Uh and which was the most expensive purchase today? Wow, okay. Recent purchase I just got last year actually. Okay. Uh Fender Custom Shop, Heavy Relic, uh 70th anniversary broadcaster. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, yeah, no, no. okay. So it's in it's in the Stratocaster fam. Telecaster fam. Telecaster. Yep. Telecaster fam. I Telecaster. know the Stratocaster, I know the Telecaster. Yeah. Broadcaster. Uh, okay, this is only something a musician will know. <laughs> okay, okay. History lesson if you have a quick two minutes. Okay. The Telecaster started life called the Broadcaster. Okay. Broadcaster produced under Fender. Right. Gretsch sued Fender because they had a drum kit called the Broadcaster. So that was in 1950. Right. 51. Fender got sued, so they had to take off the decal. Right. So there wasn't any name for for what we know as the Telecaster now. So right. 51 mm -hmm. is called the No Caster because there's no name for it. Jesus. Okay. 52, okay. they come out with the name Telecaster because right. of television. Right. Ah. So okay. hence the first Telecaster was 52, 50 was Broadcaster, in the middle is No Caster. Fun fact. Okay. Yeah. So it was, I think, 2020 that they celebrated their tw uh, 70th anniversary. Right. So they re-released the broadcaster. So they could call it the broadcaster now without getting sued, is it? Because oh, yes. oh, is it because they're because too big and Gretsch the Fender is now so big and, and Gretsch is still in the, the uh, minor leagues. Yeah. Because Fender won't scratch now. Ah <laughs> <laughs> So uh, tables are turned now, right? Okay. Yeah. Damn. So this okay. is just like uh some giant watch brand buying over a small watch brand, then yep. it's, it's like a big metal finger, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh damn, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so this is your most recent. So that's the most recent purchase. The yeah. most expensive one? Most expensive. Expensive. I think it has to be a toss up of between that and a sixty four, I believe, custom shop the uh, SG Gibson. SG Gibson, the one that you carry, the one, the maroon one. The one I showed you. Yes, that's the one that um Tony Iomi yep. from Black Sabbath. He yep. played the left hander one, obviously. Yep. Is it left hander? Yeah, it's left hander, right? Yeah, I think so. The left hander yep. one, the the exact same maroon color design. Yep. Yeah, again. Black Sabbath fan. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, no, that, no, that's a very nice one. I, 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 you brought it to, to, to the workplace before. Yeah, I showed you. I yeah. showed you. And I was like, oh shit, this is the one that... Yeah. Almost the one that Tony Iommi plays from, from Black Sabbath. Shout out to Tony Iommi. Shout out Black Sabbath. Shout out all the Black Sabbath songs. And that, but, uh, yeah. So, okay. So, that, well, so between, yeah, between that Fender and that Gibson. So, yeah. which is your favorite? They both serve different purposes, right? right. It's okay. a very different sound. Okay. So, how, how you play the, 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 the SG Gibson? That actually Gibson has a bit more of a pointed, aggressive sound. Okay. Black Sabbath? Yeah, in the uh, theme of Black Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. Doom Metal? Uh -huh. Yeah. The Fender's a little bit more... I would say warm. mild. Mild. Mild, warm. A bit old school in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just different users. Yeah, the John Mayer, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton sort of vein. Ish. If you were, again, as a layman. Okay. Ish. Okay. Ish. I, but I yeah. watch enough to it to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but, but which one do you perform with the most? Actually, so I try to spread it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I don't. So I don't overuse one guitar. I try right. to make sure I rotate. 
Sounds like me with my watches. I try to I try to change and rotate. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This kind of this, so so you know collecting the, the collection the collecting bug is not only applicable with just one hobby. Clearly, yep. guitar playing as well. You 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 you, you, you uh, the usage wise is you spread over a set yep. period of time. Wait, the, the question is: Do you have the same phrases that we use in the guitar community in the watch community? Because when we want to buy a new piece of gear, right. new guitar in the, in the guitar community, we call it guess. Guitar acquisition syndrome or gear acquisition syndrome. Do you have something similar in the watch community? No. I think you just call it, you call it the watch bug or something. Yeah, oh, you call okay. it the watch okay. bug, dump sure. the rabbit hole. Sure. Uh, uh, I've been caught poisoned by people before. Okay. Uh, the, 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 my friend, my, co- my ex colleagues who got crazy in the watches, uh, their, their wife now labels me as poison. <laughs> uh, so, so I've heard that before. Uh, yeah. But we call it gas. Uh, almost as famous as Poison Ivy, the Batman comics. Wow. Uh, but anyway, okay. uh, it's, <laughs> it's okay. So I guess the next question is, maybe in, in very simple terms, like what is performing music to you? What, 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 how, how is it to you? What, what, what feeling does it give you in it? So I think performing music, it's one of those things that, you know how they say like, everyone gets a thrill of a kick out or something, right? Right. I, for one, so for example, I don't like roller coasters. I don't get a kick out of it. Some yeah. people do. Okay. Right? I get a kick out of being on stage. Okay. At times, it's... Um, the attention of the ladies? No, not really. <laughs> it's about nailing the... Actually, for me now, I'm married, right? right. So, it's, what, it's about nailing the parts, about being cohesive, about right. being great as a band. Right. And it, and it relates to the whole thing about live music again, right? Right. In live music, it's very different from studio. Right. Live music is dynamic. You want to just feel where the band is going. You want to sense like, right. like, like how everyone's playing, how I can complement and make the music sound better right. and bring my skills that I practice like for hours and then at home to a live gig, which is actually very different, right? right. One, you're playing solo and two, like a backing track or two, right. uh, to like a recording or whatever. Right. Live is a whole different ballgame. Correct. Yeah. You have little room for error, right? And, and, yeah. and if you buy, uh, I think something that uh, I heard Joe Bonamassa mentioned before. Yep. It was Joe Bonamassa. Uh, he said that uh, in his guitar, he was giving a tour of his guitar collection. His enormous and, guitar and, collection. And, and, and I think he pulled out, uh, I can't remember, I think it was a, just, less, just a, Gibson, a good Gibson Les Paul. Yeah. Obviously, the, the famous one is the 59, right? The one that uh, Slash, Jimmy Page, they play. I know my shit, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm not just boring hack. I know my music. Yep. So I think there's probably a replica or something or a reissue. Yep. Uh, and he says, this is such a great guitar. But it's ruthless. Yeah. In this, from the standpoint that it's such a great guitar, it sounds sounds so good. It sounds so. I can't remember the word he used, crisp or something. Yeah. But if you make a mistake, yeah. And you play something, you make a tiny mistake. It the mistake is amplified for everybody. It's so obvious. Yeah. You can't hide. Yeah. But that's what makes it great for him. Yeah. It sounds good, but the moment you you mess up. The, the the guitar will tell the whole world that you 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 basically fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> so so I guess I guess I think two things. I think his might not have been a replica. Right. He has a huge collection of Les Paul. Right. right. He's a fanatic. Right. He's a collector as well. Right. His might be original. Okay. Yeah. Like he probably he hunted for one, paid like 20, 30k for one, fifty k for one. Well afforded. Back in the day, right? Yeah. Well afforded. And mm-hmm. no, I think to that as well. Like essentially, when you think of an instrument, it's sort of an extension of yourself. It's how you translate what you're feeling out as notes and music right. to people Correct. whatever you call it frequencies and pitches and whatnot right, right. to people Correct. so the best guitars would be conduits of that yeah and your skill. exactly yeah. replicate that essentially Correct. yeah which is ruthless it's actually yeah it's on, on show for the whole world to see right, right. But, yeah I think it's, like, it's similar to this is the, the other the other end of the spectrum would be a $300 random guitar $200 amp yep. no pedal nothing yep. will sound completely different with a Pro musician playing, yeah, and and an intermediate guy playing, in, a beginner intermediate guy playing, yep. will sound completely different. It's so literally, it's your skill. Obviously, once you reach a certain level of proficiency, you want the best, and you can have, if you can afford it, yep. like he does, uh, you can afford <laughs> you can afford the gear. <laughs> yeah, you want to push the the limits of of the of the sound that you will get achieved. Yeah, to to basically uh, put your skill out there. Like I, I'm 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 there. I'm him. Agree. To use a basketball reference. Yeah. Yep. So agree, agree. Fantastic. So that's good. So I, I would say maybe another point. Uh so so now that you, you see that you, you, you with a job, it helps you accumulate gear and, and new acquisitions faster. <laughs> so for, for those of them, you know, you know, people always have this have this thing, right? Where yeah, uh, ah shit, should I work a desk job, office job? Should I uh, just just to survive, uh, make a decent living? Yeah. Or do I just 
F all that, I, I, I full-time <laughs> pursue my career. Yeah. I think I think for you, let's just say our firm is not easy to get into. You need to be of a certain caliber of person. Again, this is a this is a, a I'm basically a, a saying that we, we both are pretty pretty decent, we're pretty, pretty legit in our careers. <laughs> I hope so. so, so <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the fact that you can still do what you do. Mm-hmm. So so does it is that a, a new a new, a new, a new thing to aspire towards, because mm. there are people who are very extreme, right? Yep. Either, either or, very, yep. very, you know, binary. Either I be a full, full fledged musician, yep. I perform, you know, two shows a day, six days a week, yeah, uh, uh, and then I write my own music, I come my own albums, come my own material. Obviously, there are guys like that, Benjamin Kang, the local yep. guys, local bands. I mean, sure, if you want to do that, that's great. Yeah, but then you're sort of forming a new sort of paradigm where you can be a full time person earning a good, a good pay. Paying your mortgage, no problem. Um, but at the same time, twice a week, three times a week, maybe on the weekends, you can see the way I do. So tell us about that. Is is that a yeah. paradigm you think? Yeah. Or, or what are your thoughts about about this balance that you're striking? <laughs> I think so. I I feel like the forward to all of that is that essentially I do feel okay. Maybe it's our upbringing, being, right? In Singapore, being a very pragmatic society, yeah, and it's expensive. That's why yeah, to be pragmatic. Yeah, carry on. And, Essentially, your aspirations do have to be tempered with uh, realism. Yeah, realism. Exactly. Yeah, I think you use the same word, basically. Exactly. Word. To essentially be aware of where you stand in terms of, okay, I want to be the, as famous as whoever Taylor Swift or whatever. Yeah. Essentially, at times, unfortunately, it's not just one thing that makes her successful. Right. It's, not like, it's not just that she can write great songs. It's not just that she can perform, it's actually the whole package. Right. So you do have to be realistic about that, unfortunately, That's true. to be that famous, right. be that successful. And even then, you think about it, there is an element of luck right. involved. There's an element of you just being connected to the right people, born in the right place. Honestly, or both, exceptionally gifted, right? Uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So the good thing is that YouTube and social media has sort of lowered their bar to entry. You right. can get a bit more famous, you can right. get your music out. You can earn an okay living just playing gigs, right? Mm. Exactly, but okay again is subjective, right? right. It depends. Right. right. So I think then on to the life choices, right? I always see it as sort of a pyramid, right? Sure, so right. Okay. Where you choose, uh, or rather a triangle, where you choose to find... Uh, where your life pans out to be. Okay. So in that triangle, you have the extreme ends. Okay. So you have money. Right. You have time. Right. And you have fulfillment. Right. Right. I feel like it's always. Uh, I I think unless you're extremely fortunate to be born into a rich family, uh, or, uh, you don't have to worry about. You don't have to worry about. Yep. Your livelihood. Now. Or the, or that zero point zero zero one percent of the overall population, you can strike a perfect balance, right, between right. all three, right. Right. Or inherently, something has got to, to give, give. Yeah, essentially, right. So I think it's sort of a combination of all of those that you have to consider to find where you want to find joy. Can you balance that with being paid as well? Yeah, to be able to put food on the table. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, maybe just but then he gets. I'm sure he gets paid playing music as well. You don't have to confirm all the time, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm I'm pretty certain he does get paid. It, so it, it helps. It helps. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. Yeah. It does. Look at this! Look at the smoke on his face. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah, the, yeah, the paradise. So, so essentially, it's strangely enough, and interesting enough. I do have friends who choose, uh, and they are musicians as well, right? And they choose a the, the cool to, people, the, a totally different career path. Right. So I've I've like this friend used to work in a financial institution, comfortable. Right. He decided, you know what? Forget all this. I'm just going to do music full time. Okay. So essentially, he's a full time drummer now for a lot of the large Chinese artists, and he flies over for gigs during the weekend. He back. drums. He drums. Oh wow. He drums. Very good friend of mine, and he chose that for himself. He said, "That's what I'm going to do. That's what right. I want to do with my life. That's what. That's why I find fulfillment. I might or might not give up certain aspects, like uh, maybe a more stable sort of salary income, yeah, yeah, employment, uh, and to rely on gigs and whatnot, which could actually." be a bit more sporadic, right? So he made the switch during COVID. So, so, so. Oh, shit. Yeah. But essentially, like, now all panned up for him. So he's doing well, he's playing, stage he lost his job and whatnot. Can you give a couple couple examples of artists that he played for, like famous ones? Famous ones? Just, just for the gossip, yeah. Actually, a lot of Chinese artists. I don't like, know if I can name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, not the super big names. Uh, Actually, super big, but more based in China. Or more based in China. So yeah. you, you cannot name them. Or, I don't know. I'm just trying you, to, you don't know their name. I'm trying to protect his privacy. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Okay. But to be fair, I don't listen to much Chinese music. Yeah. 
So no, but it's the kind that they can sell out stadiums still. Right? Oh shit, China. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's still huge artists, huge projects, but essentially it's a life wave. That again, you think about it. If you're a gigging musician, right. like that sort of, I would say, playing for live sessions, your weekends are gone. Right. Right. Are you okay with that? Right. And if you have a spouse, if you, in terms of consideration, in terms of time spent, are you okay with that? Essentially, my free days are my weekdays when you might be out working a normal job. My weekends are all overseas. Are you okay right. with that? Right. So a lot of that comes into consideration as well. So for some of young people, I guess, I guess maybe more broadly yeah. beyond being a musician, uh, just generally being an artist or doing something yeah. that's maybe a bit more unorthodox yeah. in nature. Would you say? Uh, how, how would you? Let's say if you you now can be a mentor to these people. Wow. Would you? And, and let, let's say they have to give up like a prop, like a well paying job. Yep. I'm talking six figures. Right, uh, uh, in Singapore, and then just assuming they are okay with that, they're doing reasonably okay. They're, they're doing reasonably yeah. well. Yeah. Is it should they go for both in a in a sense that they 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 use they, they do do their, their, their do their hobbies as a side hustle, or do they just never mind? I should just do either or. Mm. Well, what would be your advice to people like that? Well, I think context is important, right? Right. Again, if you are switching from one thing to another, you've got to consider what you're giving up, right. what you're gaining as well. Right. So it's really just down to that sort of balancing act as well. Right. I think for me, it took, so I have had an off, like thought, random thoughts, like, oh, what if I do music full time and everything? Then you come to the realization that, okay, like for me personally, mm-hmm. the question I ask myself is, would I want something that I enjoy and take joy in, which is a hobby, uh, to become something that is work? Right. right, and a lot of the artists out there essentially, I do watch a lot of their interviews and everything. Right, if and if you were to put yourself in their shoes, right, if you were to be playing the same thing over yes, and over no, again, no matter what variations or whatnot, right? right, but essentially you're playing that same material over and over again, right? right, and you don't really have a choice as to what you play. The crowd demands that you play your famous song. You have to do it, right? Like, are you okay with that? Right. And if it, yeah, essentially, if it becomes a job, right? Because the moment I, I do feel that at times, if you put a structure or rigidity around things, it becomes it, a lot less enjoyable. It does kill the joy at times. Right, right. So, which is why, in terms of, I mean, maybe to also talk about Watch Jelly, what we're doing here. Yep. Uh, I, I sometimes joke to people that this is my real job. <laughs> uh, but, but really, no, it's a passion project of mine, which is why I'm getting the, the, the views that I'm getting. Not, not a lot, nothing to, to shout about. Mm. But I genuinely enjoy these conversations, right? Oh. I had like I don't draw it for, for several years, but this is the first time I've sat down with him. Yeah. Literally non-stop talking so in depth. No interruption. No 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 manager calling and then every <laughs> <other> call. <laughs> which which by the way happened uh, uh, just before this interview started. It was quite funny. Uh, so for those of you who know <laughs> us and uh, work with us, you you know. Yeah. Um so so yeah, I, I genuinely enjoy these conversations because it is uh, I, I, I hope because I, I managed I, I dig out information from you that yep. it makes me know you a lot better yep. makes me yep. get uh, pieces of information perspectives yep. from a life that I don't need mm-hmm. and, and sometimes I imagine what if what if I, yep. I get a decent perspective now and, and generally a lot of these points I've thought of them before mm-hmm. but it's nice to have somebody concurring and confirming yep. I think it's, uh, it's very valuable yep. so I think from, from that standpoint it completely makes sense uh, I totally agree so would you say then now, so if you had to do it all over again, yep. would you do the exact same thing? I would think so. You would think so? You would so. go on the same route again, uh, more or less? Actually, it depends, I would say. Okay. If you were to give me a free try over that I can restart, mm-hmm. hey, why not? Don't risk involved, right? Try something new, right? So let's say you're fresh out of school. Fresh out of school. You would do that. Just try something new. No, if I could get a free restart every time, right? Oh, oh free restart. Uh, okay, like, like, like a Game Boy. But like, okay. again, <laughs> I don't know if the life was with me, right? Right. The sim- simple sort of pragmatic. In, in a simulation, you wouldn't mind doing Yeah, in a simulation, exactly. Suppose I can just go to sleep, simulate exactly. like a real scenario for two years. Exactly. And then if I can say, yes, I want to continue exactly. when I wake up, exactly. or no, go back to my current arrangement. Yep. I think you would, I mean, I most people would do that. Right? <laughs> yeah, just yeah. to try, right? Right. right, right. But if not, I, I would think, uh, yeah, the practical aspect would take kick in <laughs> relatively quickly. And then I might end up being in the same situation that I'm in right, right now. Because, yeah, unfortunately, I think in terms of yeah stability and everything, right. we do, I, I'm not sure whether, again, there's a cultural aspect to it. And what, I'm sure there is. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is. Right? So essentially, 
that whole worry about okay, is this stable? Is this for the long run? Right. Do, do right. I have a, a, a sufficient enough nest egg if I wanted to retire? That sort of considerations. We're still relatively young, but yeah. essentially those sort of considerations are those that kick in. I would say correct, right? Because right. quickly, yeah. So I think so. I I totally agree. So for me, it's like doing this in my free time is at night now. So it's like after work, really. <laughs> yep. Um. So I think it still gives me that level of fulfillment. Yeah. I think because yeah. Uh, thankfully, my parents invest from a young age. I could speak reasonably well, uh, not as well as a lot of people, but reasonably well. And I think I think there's a flow in which I speak. So I used to do storytelling when I was younger in kindergarten, primary oh. school. So so which is why when I speak, I there is a flow and there's a storyline involved, even though I don't intentionally do it that way. Uh, yep. But I think that it's a it's a waste of talent to just be doing my job like this, all day, <laughs> which is fine, okay. which is fine. It pays the bills, and I'm okay at it. I'm pretty okay at it. I, yep. I would say. Uh, you feel you're, free to disagree. You're great at it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think from a from a from a person who just wants to speak to people, knowing people, and understanding perspective, yeah. um, is an art form. It's yeah. not always a science. And I, I think it would be good to explore this, uh, I guess, ability that I have, mm. uh, and, and then hopefully people give a shit about it uh, online. Yeah, mm. and yeah. So then, so maybe just to round up, round off this this part. Um, would you say again? It's, uh, hopefully, is it, it, there's a fun angle to it? Doesn't it? <laughs> sure, <get> serious. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, what's really whatever I'm doing right yeah. now gives me fulfillment on the weekends. Yeah. And, 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 and outside of my nine to five, so honestly, we don't work nine to five. I work closer yeah. to eight to seven, guys. Yeah. Nine to five is yeah. bullshit. It yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Eight to seven plus times at night where I have to work. Yeah. Right. Uh, 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 but but that comes with a, a high pressure job that, that pays okay. That pays me quite okay. Yeah. Uh, more than okay, actually. Uh, <laughs> the, the most people. Uh, so, would you say that, uh, for me, it gives me fulfillment. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I, I, I injects meaning to my otherwise relatively straightforward mundane life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apart from my personal life, of course. But uh, doing this uh, gives me a level of fulfillment. I, I know that I can unleash a bit more creativity yeah. in the way that I do things. Yeah. Uh, more than just a, a, sometimes a more procedural type of job. Yeah. With a Agreed. limited amount of creativity. Agreed. Limited amount of it. Would you say that's also the case for, for you? For 100%. 100%. So, yeah, it's again, it's on that spectrum where you want to find that fulfillment, right? right. Again, if it's very routine, very procedural, mm. I get it. Some people do find joy in that, right? right? But if you needed that creative outlet, does your employment give you enough spare time to express yourself in other ways right. in your free time, right? So the weekends or even at night at times, right? So essentially, that's, it's that sort of balancing act. I don't think anyone has got it perfect or yeah. down pat, right? right? But it's where you just want to, to allocate your resources, your energy, your time right. and whatnot and find a balance. Correct. So literally for me, this started out as a so I started liking watches eight years ago. So a lot of my, I guess my my my, my paycheck goes to buying, certain, acquiring certain watches. <laughs> uh, so I literally just like watches from the start, and then, and then through watching videos, and then I I see the way that content is created these days. I find that a lot of people genuinely have some interest in watches, some yep. more than others. Yep. And I find that why not use this as a platform? Use this as a platform to connect with people. Yeah. So it started out literally as just a, someone who likes watches. Then at some point, I went a bit like. Oh, let me get that Rolex, you know. <laughs> I, I went through that phase as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to admit. Yeah. And then at some point, I find, hey, you know what? Let me make this into a worthwhile endeavor. Connect yeah. with people, fellow collectors, people who are just, even just borderline interests, yeah. but use it as a platform to connect people, mm-hmm. talk about topics that uh, hopefully interest people. Yeah. And spiritually, anyway, people don't give a shit about it. Yeah. Uh, spiritually, it brings some level of, of fulfillment. Yeah. Uh, you know, curious a lot of curiosity. Uh, I, I can I can quell a lot of my curiosity that I would have otherwise only, which would have otherwise been only been been re- restricted to my imagination. Yeah. So I think <laughs> being able to talk about it, I think I think it does help. What if I became, What if I had a bit more talent? What if I played the guitar? What if I I, I didn't listen to Eric Clapton and I, and I thought foolishly that I could play very well? Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. So so yeah, appreciate you taking the time. It's pretty late enough now. <laughs> Thanks. So thank you all. Hope you really enjoyed the content that we created for this one. Yeah. Loosely related to watches because it's about collecting watches, about your passions, uh, music, m- music uh, musicianship uh, as well. So hopefully you like the content. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is Alvin. This is this is Joshua. Thank you again. Uh, we're on watch. We're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. So do do look for our page. Like us. Chat chat to me. Uh, comment on on what you feel about the episode. And don't forget to keep watching Jelly guys. Cheers, Alvin. Signing out. Thanks. Bye.